right. Showing the, the teensy bad detector. We're in uh, zero nine seven. Oh, we already hear a bet. This soon. Okay, it's just past nine o'clock in the evening. It sounds like her common yacht tool is somewhere in the area, but I cannot see it unfortunately. Okay, our bed detector. Making a little bit of light here. You can see the microphone at the top. Our um, connector for our headphones, which is now connected to a speaker. The uh, micro USB connector of the Teensy. You can power the device via that connector. But you can also uh, use uh, that connector to do some software updates. We have a very small button over here. You can see it gives us some light in the daylight mode. Also accidentally pressed another button. A power button. The power bank which I built in has three lights out of four that are lit. And you can also see the micro USB connector over there. And here on the side we have our uh, micro SD card for recording. Okay, some little sounds of our uh, common noctule. Unfortunately the crickets are also very loud so it's a little bit hard to uh, to see only the sounds of the common noctule. Okay, we have a few other controls that are important. Our controls are the small red buttons left and right and the two blue ones, we used blue ones here, but any color would be fine of course, but it helps to tell you which knobs I mean. The red one on the left is for the display mode changing, so it says display uh, quite close to that button. Below that you can see volume, which is assigned to the uh, left encoder. The right encoder has the function of the microphone gain and changing the detect mode is done with the right red button. So you can see that on the display. So these are the functions these buttons have at the moment. Okay, I will press, press the, the right left button um, to show you different display modes. It now in, it's in a waterfall mode. If I press it, we have a mode with no graphical representation. The uh, display update made some uh, interference. We have uh, some hardware enhancements which almost uh, made them disappear. But you can still hear, still hear maybe a little bit of a display update noise if you listen very carefully. So that's why we also have this mode. Okay. If I press again, we uh, will see the, uh, the spectrum mode. You can hear my voice and the voices of the crickets. If I use my fingers and produce some noise, you can also see that here on the uh, spectrum display. Okay, I press again and we are in waterfall mode. Just because uh, I like that one best. Um, the right red button changes the detect mode. If I press it, we go to frequency division. And you can hear the uh, crickets sound a lot different. If I press it again, we are in a pass-through mode. You don't hear anything special. It just stays uh, the same. Now we are in heterodyne mode. We have no bed passing by, so I'm going to try the right encoder to change the frequency. At the top you can see the frequency is set to like 14 kilohertz. Maybe we should use a little bit higher, somewhere around here. Oh, around 29 we have the uh, the sounds of the crickets. If I press again the detect mode, it switches to auto heterodyne. You can see the frequency changes. And it takes the strongest signal it can find and use the heterodyne in that frequency region. So uh, it picks its own frequency. Okay, I press again, and we are in a time expansion mode, the uh, mode I do like the best, uh, because it just sounds so nice. Um, Alright, those are the two red buttons. The encoders, the rotary buttons, uh, can change the gain, for example, which is set to now. If 
if I change it you can see the number go up you can hear there is a lot of more signal but also a lot of more noise so I normally use that to start with around 30 so we do not have too much uh, noise if we press the button you can see it turn to yellow and we can change the function of the uh, uh, encoder to frequency sample rate or volume okay the same four functions are also on the left encoder okay you can see some nice sounds on the beta does in the area also not very very close but we can very good to hear that bat passing by ah here we hear another one you can very clearly hear the difference between the the common nocturne that we are hearing now and uh, probably the uh, common peeper spell we heard uh, earlier um okay so the left button has the same functions it's now set the volume well quite clear what volume does i think um, if i press the button it turns to yellow and we can select another function gain we already did see the gain frequency we just already turned the frequency and the reason we do have two encoders and we can set both functions is that sometimes you want to select the frequency and the volume or maybe the frequency and the gain or the volume and the gain so you have multiple options with these two, two encoders uh, okay frequency I've seen sample rate and if I push the button I can change the sample rate the sample rate can be quite high up to 352 kilohertz but you can see we only have something visible on the left side of the screen and it passes quickly through the screen so I usually use a lower uh, setting uh, 281 already is a nice one but something like this 192 or this is the one I normally use for the uh, live listening and well also viewing mode uh, okay so that was sample rate if I press the button again we can see we also have a record function and we have a playback function and we have settings we're gonna see settings first I press the button and you can see we have a lot of settings that we can set to um, have as defaults and powering up the device uh, display waterfall is the one I like I use the left button to use select and I change to uh, like for example this one if I want to it to turn on with default settings I turn the right encoder and select defaults so this one is for selecting the function this is for changing the value uh, and save if I press the button it saves the values I changed on this screen um, I do not really want to change this the encoder um, the encoders you use normally go the clockwise direction but I bought some funny encoders probably which went counterclockwise so I had to set this one from clockwise to counterclockwise to be sure oh sorry to be sure it was running the right direction and volume up is clockwise like we used to have in most oh, oh it's close uh, missed it <laughs> was looking up but I missed the bet okay um, time expansion lowest frequency this is a, a nice one if you have a lot of near ultrasound uh, sounds around you like from crickets which I also have but the frequency is a bit too high you can turn the frequency up maybe like to here to 35 and you can hear it become silent the time expansion mode is not triggered but you hear the bat passing by it was quite low so I just saw it right now you only hear the bats but we also have some common yak tool uh, here in the uh, in the garden so I'll turn it back again so I will also pick up the common knock tool this one is the replay speed for the time expansion it's sent to uh, to 120 so it will expand the um, frequency 
it picks up quite a bit if I change it you can hear the difference it's now uh, at one tenth you can hear the cricket sound much different ah here's the bat again oh and here is a predator the long eared owl was just passing by the bat probably does not like that okay if we now hear the bats, or the, sorry, the crickets, you can hear a completely different sound. Okay, set it back to 20, which I do like. This is the sample rate we just saw. Sample rate of 176 is one I like to use for the live listening and viewing mode. But on recording, sorry, left encoder goes on to recording, I like to use 352, the highest mode there is, to get the most detail and 44 kilohertz is a nice frequency to use if you uh, are playing back your sounds so you can hear the uh, the bats you just uh, recorded if it would play back at the same uh, sample rate you would not hear the bats okay this is the time setting and this is the uh, date setting uh, if you want to change change this or save this you should press the right button I'm gonna do that you can see save is appearing there if I press the left button again we exit the menu okay so that was the menu with the settings we will go to record I press the encoder button and you can see it says record off would be nice if my bat was passing by again but somehow it uh, it will not show when we are recording okay no problem we just press record ah here it is and it kind of turns silent what just happened is it's recording but it is recording and it cannot use time expansion at the same time so you can see here it says heterodyne mode and the frequency is quite high for heterodyne mode so we just probably missed the uh, the sounds of the bats that was passing by in heterodyne mode so we should probably have set the frequency before changing to record so we can hear it passing by but we will just stop it now by pressing the uh, red button so record is off and we are in live listening mode okay we're gonna switch to uh, playback oh we're in volume sorry pressing the encoder rotating the left encoder to play you press play and we can see we have one file with a low frequency which i recorded earlier this is the one the b28 we just uh, recorded and i press the right button to play let's hope our bat is in there does not really seem I recorded much and I pressed uh, the button at the moment the bat seemed to be passing by but somehow I'm missing it I'm gonna show you or let you hear another file I think this was a nice one B16 playing that button yes that sounds a lot better it sounds like this is a um, common peeper trail looking for a mate <laughs> I can see two long-eared owls at this moment in the sky over here, so that's probably why the bat has gone. Okay, well, I think you get the idea. Stop it right here, so. This was my demonstration here of the teensy bat detector. Hope you like it, and uh, hope you're gonna build one yourself, maybe. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.